Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. The conversion of Saul. Meanwhile, Saul, still reading threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them back to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice, and but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus, in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias? He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street named Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tar Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might again regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God in us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this preaching moment. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable.
Nothing stays the same. I would sing it if I had practice, but I didn't practice for my <laughs> Everyone must change. No one stays the same. The song says, the young become the old. Mysteries do unfold, because that's the way of time. Nothing and no one goes unchanged. There are not many things in life you can be sure of except rain comes from the clouds and sun lights up the sky and hummingbirds do fly. Change is indeed inevitable. And if we think about some of the events in our world in recent weeks and recent years, that is good news because there are some things happening that I wish would change. I pray I'm not by myself. And I believe they will change. As the psalmist of Psalm 27 says, I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now don't get me wrong, I see the goodness of the Lord every day. But I believe we will see the fullness of God's goodness. We call this the kingdom of God. I believe we will see God's kingdom reign. I believe that we
So we can see that the before Paul, in Acts 7, and this is around the story of the stoning of Stephen after he proclaimed the gospel to the council, Acts 7, 58 says, they then dragged him, Stephen, out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. And then chapter 8, verse 1 said, and Saul approved of their killing. The act of Paul, in Paul's letter to the Romans, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Same person. The before Paul, in the, I think the same uh, Acts 7, but Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house, dragging off both men and women, he committed them to prison. The after Paul, in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, if I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patience. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, doing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. How does one go from approving killings to exhorting love? From ravaging the church to building the church? Only God